As Bitcoin enters its 85th day under the all time high, this next signal is just dollars away from occurring. Now, although this signal shocks and surprises the majority time and time again, it does come with a good buying opportunity. As always with trading and investing, we don't need to fear the unknown. We just need to prepare for it and throw the probabilities on our side so that we are ready for the signals when they present. You have found your home of macro cycle analysis with me, Jason Pizzino, as we cover Bitcoin, cryptos, the stock markets, and of course, the biggest market in the world, real estate. Don't forget to get that like button to 3000 today. Thanks again for your support. And if you are new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. It's probably the best investment that you'll make. You can always unsubscribe at any time in the future. Absolutely free. All right, guys, let's start with the traditional markets as we look at the stock markets and then get into Bitcoin and cryptos so we can explain the story of where we are in the markets. Now, I've alluded to the next seven months of the year being positive for the S&P 500 based on the data. This is the chart that we've been following, looking at the trading range for the S&P 500, looking to the upside for the rest of 2024. My theory is that while the markets are going up, while the traditional markets are going up, we're going to see some of that money flow into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And even just some of that uh, has enough effect to cause some pretty good damage. Well, yeah, good damage to the upside for Bitcoin and cryptos. So this is the trend that we are looking at. We've been through this stage here or going through it now, which is a trading range for the stock market. And we're seeing that with Bitcoin and cryptos giving some good buying opportunities. And then what happens is uh, further upside. Now I've talked about this quite uh, a lot as it is a longer term cycle. And we just continue to remind ourselves of this daily, but I haven't mentioned the data and where this comes from. When the market, when the S&P 500 is up 5% or 10% on the year. So from the uh, open of January to the close of May, there has been some very, very strong results leading into the end of the year. And that's where this comes from. So if we take a look at how this all works, we will find that there are going to be significant corrections. You can see these corrections along the way uh, can be quite substantial, especially when the market is volatile as it is in these election years. Now, before I get to the data, it is important to note the corrections that have occurred while the market is going up. It notes here that five times uh, during this period, the market has corrected 10% or more, even though it has finished in the green. So that is pretty scary for the majority of investors, especially with the S&P, as the most recent correction was uh, 6%, and for the, the NASDAQ, it got to around 7%. So a lot might not be able to handle the moves to the downside. Trading investing isn't that easy, but if you have a longer term outlook, you got the data on your side, the probabilities on your side, and of course, a trading plan using something like a swing indicator, then that's going to help you identify support, resistance, buying opportunities, selling opportunities, take profit opportunities, stop losses, and so that you can basically sleep easier at night. So the data for the S&P 500 June through to December, so seven months, if January to May is greater than or equal to 5%. Percent of times, 85% of the time it's up and 15% of the time it's down. So pretty reasonable odds to stack on your side. Do note that of course, 15% of the time it's not going to be up. And the number of times that it has been greater than 10%, which is what we saw this year, the S&P was up more than 10% for those five months. Uh, it's uh, 17 times the next seven months are up and one time it was down. So not 100%, of course, there's no 100% in the market, but again, pretty decent odds, especially after a 10% move. So this is compare, uh, comparing all of the seven month periods. The max gain that has occurred after January to May of 5% was a 25% move, all seven month periods, uh, roughly about 43.8%. And there's the, the data again, 85. Okay, so what the research suggests is that the weight of evidence is telling us that we're probably going to see higher prices on the S&P. And of course, at least my theory, and maybe while you're watching here, is that we're going to see more of that into Bitcoin and cryptos. So any opportunities that we see now with the prices dropping to some significant buying opportunities would probably be good buy the dip opportunities. 
but then there's always a disclaimer with that. You want to be getting in on the strong altcoins. And of course, I'm going to get to those later in later in the video. So let's cover what's happened on the stock markets over the last 24 hours. Essentially, new all-time high yesterday for the S&P 500. The futures market here hit that new all-time high after hours and then basically had a, a bit of a pullback. Second highest close in history and the new day has now started after hours. Needs a few more points to go there to hit another new all-time high. But of course, we're not aiming for this thing to rocket straight up. If there are corrections, then I suspect it's going to be a similar sort of path to what's going on with the seasonal pattern. It's not a, a straight up line, but all the signs are there, positive signs that we're going to see uh, higher prices over the longer term. So that's the S&P 500. For the NASDAQ, same deal. New all-time high yesterday, slightly lower close, so the second highest daily close in history, just by a, a matter of points. NVIDIA has been skyrocketing again. Every time this thing comes down, the majority are looking for another uh, major correction and that's all over and that this was a sign of a bubble and basically it's time to prepare for Armageddon. Now, of course, I think there is a major bubble going on. It doesn't take a genius to see that. This thing is going up. But the important thing to note, again, is not to try and short a bubble. Don't get fooled that you're going to be the next big short to try and take this thing out and it's going to go your direction. You're going to be a millionaire after one trade. That's unfortunately not how the markets work. And I think the majority of people watching this video understand that, but it's still so tempting to try and short the top of a market so that we can have a hero story to tell our mates or post about online. I think at the end of the day, the best thing to do is just continue to ride the trend, make the profits, take the easy gains, and then go and do something with those gains. This has been a pretty, uh, pretty simple, straight up movement here. As you can see with the swing chart, the GAN swing indicator, you find a link to this in the uh, video description right here, seven day free trial. So go check that out. And uh, a nice simple tool to continue to lock in profits as the markets climb. Now you guys did ask about looking at some more stocks let me know in the pinned comment if you do want to see more stocks in the videos, uh, but not to make them too long, I'll quickly go through these so you can have a look at some of the, the majors that everyone talks about. Tesla has been a laggard. It is a lagging stock. It doesn't take a genius to see that, but it does take strong emotions to stay away from the laggards in a bull market. It had its time. It did amazingly well, and it topped out in 2021. So coming into coming up to three years that it has not seen a new all-time high and it's basically been on a downtrend. Could this be a higher low forming before it breaks out? Potentially, but at the end of the day, if you want to get on stocks that are making ground, well, then you've got to get on the stuff that is breaking to new highs. Strangely enough, they're going to continue to go up in a bull market. So Tesla has been lagging, not my opinion, facts from the charts. So that leads us on to Bitcoin and what's going on with BlackRock looking to launch a national stock exchange to compete with the New York stock, uh, stock Exchange with a tokenization play here. And so you've got the video here of, uh, is it Larry? Yep, good old Larry talking about bringing in tokenization for everything. It could be bonds, it could be stocks. Of course, cryptos would be in there. Basically everything so that it can be traded and when it's settled, then it's done instantaneously. Whereas with the S&P 500, you've got that end of day where the trades all need to be settled through the system. So, I mean, I think this is a great idea. Whether it's going to happen and when it's going to happen is the next question. And they suspect it's going to be next year, accepting listings of companies by 2026. So wouldn't this be amazing to time with the end of the real estate cycle, our top being roughly around 2026. And maybe the stock market has another six, 12 months left in it where it pumps to the end of 2026 or into 2027 with this new stock exchange, this new fancy toy that everyone can gamble on. And they can basically gamble on absolutely everything while the markets are nice and high. So I think this is really interesting. Maybe it comes out near the peak but overall, I think it's going to be a good thing for the markets to be able to trade in real time and then you get the, the trade settled in real time as well. So maybe it just has a timing aspect that it comes out near the top. The ETF flows from yesterday. The day before in yesterday's video when we looked at that for the 4th of June was the fourth highest 
12.6 thousand, so really damn high, 12,600 Bitcoin flowing on that date. Fourth only to the 12th of March, the 13th of February, and the 11th of January. So pretty decent rates of the flows. However, Bitcoin had a reversal day yesterday. We had a lower high, lower low on the daily, which has put in a swing bottom at the moment. Now it's still struggling with $71,000. One of our key levels here, you can see 71,000 on the chart. And to the downside, you've got 69K as another support and then 67 along with 65 being the 50%. So again, I'm still watching the every $2,000 levels because nothing has changed throughout this 85 days of a trading range underneath the old all-time high down to the current low there at $56,500. So while we remain in this trading range, essentially it's just important to keep looking at the same numbers. Nothing has changed yet, which is an, an easy thing to continue to follow with daily. So we don't need to spend too much more time there. Keep a watch out for 69. The pivot point here is still 65. Market breaks down from 65, possibly going to see some trouble down to the lower 60s. But for now, we're holding up in the strong half of the 50% above 65,000. So this signal here, we're looking at uh, the weekly trends, the number of weeks to the upside before there's been a correction. And then we can look at this across a lot of history with Bitcoin. So the idea here is that once Bitcoin reaches a, a number of weeks in a row to the upside, not the reds, not the greens, but higher highs, higher lows, then we typically see at least a pause, sometimes a correction. This is uh, this signal is now just $139 away from triggering, and it could happen this week because of how close we are. So we've got one week up, two weeks, three weeks. This is an inside week because it was a lower high, higher low. But if the current week we are in, which we are now just $139 away from that top, from the top or from the current closing price, we are $784 away. So just 1.1%. Should this break above that top of uh, $71,900, then this would bring on the fifth week to the upside. So what happens when we see five weeks to the upside? So five weeks or more. Well, if we look back, we had seven weeks here as a maximum before we had the correction. And this was after pretty significant uh, move and a lot of hype that came in through February into that peak in March. So we had to have some cool off. Essentially, when we see these timeframes extend, you typically see some sort of cool off period. And we haven't really gone that far in terms of price, but in terms of time, this at, even at three weeks has been the longest move in this entire correction. So it's still positive to the upside. The, the swing is there to the upside, but eventually time runs out and you at least need some sort of correction. We do know from 20, uh, from this bull market, you know, 20, the low in 2022 to where we now are, are now in 2024, these corrections have been about 20 to 23%. So we'll have to see where that price comes in and then have a look to the corrections, but they have been uh, less than 20% corrections as well. You can see even just the weeklies have been 17, all the way to the low, of course, is 23, but we have seen some that uh, in terms of just the weekly corrections are less than that. So I'm not suggesting that we must get a 23% correction. Even if it was to be the case, we'd come back to roughly around that low. So seven weeks up, we had the correction there. Prior to that, you had eight weeks. You can see the number here right in there. Let's take this off uh, the volume. Eight weeks up and then the pause. Now, of course, yeah, the market did go a little bit further, but you didn't have any closes above that on a weekly basis. And to me, it's not a great trade to be taking after a prolonged move to the upside. So you had four weeks, another week up and another two weeks down. Overall from that eight week top until you got a convincing breakout, it was about nine weeks from that top of basically consolidation. So there is your eight weeks. Now, prior to that, we only had one more occasion where you had five weeks or more in the same direction. And that was just out of the higher low from the, uh, the FTX crash, basically the cycle low. And so from that time there, six weeks, you had a correction. Yes, you had another week that went higher, but then it corrected again into that low. So very similar pattern to what happened at the ETF peak. And overall, from that top to the breakout, about six weeks. So six weeks of time 
to digest the move and then work its way higher into another uh, uh, consolidation range. So like I said in the intro, although this signal could be scary and you know you, st- you might see some sort of correction, you've got pretty good evidence that it could last that period of six to nine weeks, a good buying opportunity before the market would look to head higher. So if that's not clear enough, I don't know what is, but with, this is the current cycle that we're looking at. You can look back to the previous cycles as well, seven weeks up, a few weeks down here, another good buying opportunity. You got into the cycle top here. I don't think we're at a cycle top yet, but again, that was only four weeks. Let's look to some that are five weeks or greater. There is 10 weeks, only a single week correction before it broke out of the old all-time high. We had six weeks here, and that was COVID. Nine weeks up, correction. Going back to the previous 2017 cycle, eight weeks up, one within one week correction, five weeks into the peak, major correction, 12 weeks correction, five weeks. And then a little bit of a sideways grind here, another correction. You look at the time frame from that fifth week to the basic uh, to the breakout here, about eight weeks again. So you can see this is all consolidation until you got to this week where it broke out of that top. And again, 15 weeks, eight weeks, another eight weeks all sort of shorter corrections unless they're breaking out of significant price ranges. The data also suggests where that movement occurred, where that streak occurred within the previous price ranges may suggest how big the correction could be. You can see we did the eight weeks up and then the correction, if we took it from that eight weeks, you got about a 14% correction. Of course, from the top here, you've got a 21% correction. And this was within a contained range. I say that because we're looking at the price ranges of the previous price history. So it's still within the previous price action. Now you've got the area here where it did break out to a new all-time high and you had about a 23% dump from that point. But if I look back at the price contained area, so you can see here the previous old all-time high, the low, you had nine weeks up here. Then you can see it showed a pretty insignificant correction. Same deal as you go back over uh, history here. You've got the eight weeks, pretty insignificant correction, even if we put it on log so you can see it a little bit clearer. An ins- insignificant correction here, a move out of the consolidation brought on a roughly 40% correction. And then again, another move out of the consolidation brought on another significant correction. Now here wasn't able to break out altogether and it was a lesser correction. You're starting to get into the all-time high territory in that parabolic phase. Then you start to get those uh, more wild, volatile swings. And I wish I had the crystal ball and I could say exactly what the market is going to do. But of course, I don't. I'm just looking at the probabilities, what's happened in the past, how does the market move, and what could I potentially expect after that movement so it can't push me or shake me out of my positions and I could potentially enter more positions if I see those things happen. That's how I use the data. I know many people hate it and they want certainty. There's no certainty in these markets. Looking at altcoins, so we need to look at some of these stronger ones here. We've got the death of crypto prices as they corrected roughly 30% on the total cryptocurrency market cap. The stealth era may be coming to an end here. It's it's testing that 700 billion again, that level at 50%. It's still holding its ground here with higher lows after it put in that bottom in April. And so I think as we continue to climb here and test these higher prices, you're going to see more of the laggards drop off and more of the strong altcoins continue to show more strength. Again, those stealth periods in the past have all led to pretty significant moves and we identified the stealth consolidation, the stealth accumulation based on the average true range, which at this stage has also been dropping off. But as we continue to climb or as the market continues to climb, you'll probably see less of the downside action like you did in the bear market. So it's just going to be less time as the, mar- as the average true range drops off and then you start to see it move higher once again. So for the strong alts, I'll cover a couple here. You've got Solana at the moment, still holding above the significant 50% range of the move up so far, but still underneath the bear market 50% range against Bitcoin. So this is the, the tougher game to beat. It's the tougher currency to beat. The US dollar, much easier to beat, but if you can beat Bitcoin, then you're gonna be making pretty significant gains. So it's still in a relatively good position. What I wouldn't like to see is a breakdown underneath the swing bottom here 
and that previous resistance levels. So Solana's still in a relatively okay position there. Pretty good position, actually. Uh, Render, also holding for now above the 50% and still trying to get back above the move to the downside, that 50%. And again, we're looking at Bitcoin because if it can beat Bitcoin, well then you've probably got a pretty decent cryptocurrency. So Render's still in a pretty solid position provided it doesn't uh, consolidate un or break down and stay underneath this level for too long. The worst case scenario would be breaking under these lows here at uh, 0.00011 and 0 0.00010. So that, they're the levels you don't want to see render break down against BTC. Otherwise, it's probably not going to perform as well as any other cryptocurrencies that are coming out during the next alt season. When you see the alt, uh, this total cryptocurrency market cap start to break out, hit that tipping point and then go into these epic parabolic overdrive moves. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Pinned comment down below. Do you want to see more stocks, tech stocks, as the markets really do heat up? And this is basically driving a lot of the stock markets at the moment. That's your comment or question for today. Links in the video description for everything else. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you back here at the next video. Until then, take care and peace out.